What's happening guys? Back here with another update. I know it's been a long time, like a month since I've updated you guys last. Maybe even a little longer since I've talked about the turbos in particular. But uh, today I got a new update for you guys. Got Helix in. Um, I got full E85. The 19Ts are still running great. I'm about 8,000 miles in on the fucking Helix. You guys check this out. I'm not lying to you either. Or not on the Helix, sorry, on the turbos 165 and go back to my other videos of like 158 something i'm getting close to 8,000 miles very happy with these turbos no smoke no issues i just want to say one other thing guys i'm not affiliated at all with viv turbos or any of the sellers of the turbos i'm not affiliated they're not paying me they're not sponsoring me to do these i just did it for fun guys if the turbos blow up on you i'm sorry it's like every one out of ten turbos are bad and every fucking brands you get so anyway yeah i'm not sponsored don't be mad at me all right it's what i'm doing you've seen what i did how i did everything break in you know i installed everything correctly i made sure i got all my supporting mods and maintenance done and they're good for me okay they're good for me i'm still at 20 psi i know you guys want to see more than 20 pounds but i'm on full e now guys uh I have one more bottleneck after doing this whole upgrade. I have another bottleneck and that's my damn fucking low pressure fuel pump. I got a Walboro 535, a single in there. And at 20 pounds, that's about it. She's dipping into the mid to low 50s right now on full E at 20. So we can't go anymore, but I want to give a big shout out. Michael Hollingsworth, my tuner, been taking care of me, man. I had the wrong fucking sensor in the car. He he did like five, six revisions on just that, trying to figure out what was wrong. Ended up being a hardware issue on my part. But you know, we figured it out. I went to the dealer, they gave me the wrong sensor. I had an N55T map in when I should've got the N20. Went, swapped it out, car was running great. We just started, I got three revisions on this one right now. He did a great job, he always gives me tons of info. He's just so helpful, guys. Like. There's controversy about other tuners and everything, you know, not being better than others. He's he's not as good as him. Whatever, dude, go with your own fucking tuner, bro. He's a good tuner. He's not going to blow your motor up. He's making sure everything's safe in my car before he turns it up. He knows what the fuck he's doing, guys. So, add him on Facebook, at Michael Hollingsworth. Uh, send him a message, tell him I sent you. Uh, he'll hook you up, guys. Anyway, let's get into it. Um... He, we are gonna make a, a dual low pressure fuel pump, dual Walboro 535s and It's not gonna be a month before you see the next update with this guys and I'm turning up the boots cause I'm fucking sick of staying at 20 pounds. Doing all these upgrades, I'm still at 20 pounds. I'm fucking pissed, I'm not gonna lie. I'm just as mad as you guys are, I wanna see more. But you know what, we got the timing up, we got more fuel, the car's fueling is great right now. Just one more bottleneck, we're gonna add that second Walboro in there and we should have no issues hitting my, my 28 PSI. I'm also gonna be testing a regulator that he made, a new fuel regulator and it should help a lot guys it's, i'm gonna be the beta tester i'm gonna show you the next update what we did what we put in and we're also gonna put in a new line he made from the low pressure fuel pump to the high pressure fuel pump uh, apparently that line is really restrictive and just upgrading that line from the tank to the to the pump is a huge flow difference in upgrades so we're doing that in the next video the pumps and the regulator and we should have to, we're going for 28 PSI guys. We're going, we're going to just bring it up, up, up. And I'll have the video showing you guys how we go up. Anyway, I don't want to make this introduction long or anything. Stay tuned. It won't be months. I promise you until the next update and these turbos are going. But right now she's fucking ripping more than that E40 20 pounds. I tell you, I love the Helix so far. It's great. Um, I guess let's just get into the fucking video guys. We're going to the shop, show you some, some little tips and tricks you might need for the Helix. And uh, just subscribe for more, guys. Stay tuned. Peace. Anyway, let's get to it. Uh, we got a new T-Map sensor in. Well, we're about to put it in. Got a charge pipe off. About to change my O-ring on this uh, charge pipe because it's loose. You can see it's been a while. It's been loose, so I don't know. It's got loose. Uh, I got the charge pipe out. We're about to take the. I'm about to change the T-Map on here. I got the N20 sensor from the 320i. And uh, that actually reads a lot more boost, 3.5 bar. So it should be good enough for like 32 PSI or something, no more at least, something like that. So got that, got a little uh, plug for it and some pins because I was impatient and didn't wait for my adapter to get here. So we're just gonna jerry rig it with using the stock plug, or sorry, stock harness to a N20 plug. Then we're replacing the pins in the plug so it works. It should be sweet, it should even look cleaner, it should look stock. So we got our Helix three times here, all ready to go. 
we got the line from the high pressure to the rail. And then we got, um, what else we got? So I got some new spark plugs, I got my bracket, I got all the, everything I need with it. And I got some new NGK spark plugs. I'm in the middle of replacing those now while Jeffrey gets all this out of the way, the intake manifold and all that, so we can get in there, throw the helix on. Uh, yeah, guys, stay tuned. We'll be, you know, throwing this on. We'll see how she does. And uh, yeah. All right, guys. If you're wondering uh, what gap I use on these plugs and these turbos, this fuel, it's going to be 0 or 0.020 right here. Gap in there. If you're wondering what plug number I use right now, I guess these are the new ones in 97968. And so we got everything off. All right, everything's ready to be installed now. We're going to put this last plug in, get that. Fresh plugs for you know the job. Because why not? Maintenance, 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 right Jeffrey? Yeah. Maintenance. Maintenance, maintenance. That's what I preach guys. Always keep your maintenance going. Because if not, why the fuck are you gonna install these parts? Because the car's not gonna run right now. Also, it looks like I did valve cleaning not too long ago, but it they don't look horrible. But looks like I'll have to do that again in the next few thousand miles, maybe like five thousand miles. But they don't look bad for now. All right, guys, as we are about to drill the inlet in, I'm about to drill the inlet to the fuel rail because it's so restrictive. This is where we're going to get a lot more pressure, no more bottlenecking. And first, we're going to take off this sensor that's already loosened. We're going to 27. Take off this sensor just so we get no metal shavings inside. And we're going to blow it out with compressed air later. So we got the fuel rail off, we got the sensor off. And now I'm going to drill a hole right in the inlet, open this baby up so it gets some flow. And uh, Jeffrey's over there working on uh, putting the rest of the helix in while I'm doing this. So, yeah. All right, guys, just, uh, just something to note when you're installing the helix, using these stock three screws that go in the new vacuum pump cover, you can notice how this is much thinner than this. So these screws actually don't go very far in at all. So what we did is even my tuner, Michael, used these stock ones and me showing him the difference, he even is gonna go back and uh, replace screws with some longer ones now since these bolts into aluminum, we wanna make sure they're in all the way. We don't want any problems with the vibrating and this is maybe another reason why people things are breaking they're not putting them in all the way. So we went here, we got a, a new, uh, what is it, M6 1.0? Yeah. Got a new M6 1.0. I think 1. they're 20 millimeter long. 20 millimeter long. And besides the support bracket with the longer bolts that it comes with already and the bolt for the bracket, these are definitely needed and recommended, guys. So just one little thing I'd recommend doing is make sure you get some longer bolts for this vacuum pump bracket, just like this. All right, and right, let's go finish the install now. <laughs> Should not be leaking. All right, guys, another few things I want to explain is uh, this low pressure line down here to the high pressure fuel pump. We actually bent it out of the car just a little bit to the right. And then uh, got the line in the back on good. The helix is on. We put Loctite on all the bolts, which is also recommended, guys. We hand tighten, Jeffrey hand tighten uh, all this. He actually did all this shit for me. So shout out to Jeffrey for helping me. But anyway, we got the bolts hand, hand tightened in here. We, uh, before we actually fully tightened everything, made sure Loctite was on, and then we tightened everything at once. So we're doing this job right. She's snug. She's not moving anywhere at all. Most force. So, yeah. Felix is in. About to drill the fuel rail out now. You know? Get it in. In the shop out of here. That's how we do. Almost there, guys. Let's see. All right, guys. Just drilled the inlet to the fuel rail. Using, uh, what, what size was this again? Three millimeters. Three millimeter. Maybe four. Maybe four. Watch it. You drill that out. Size. So basically, you just don't want to drill that outer hole out. You want to drill the little hole on the inside yeah, out. Yeah, you can see right through it now. It used to be this size. Yeah, it used to be that size in there, guys. And we drilled that out. Here, this is a big mod that a few people have just started doing. I've been hearing about it. it it's gonna spike the rail pressure so much more. And even on a stock high pressure fuel pump, 
we hear that uh, it actually increases a lot of uh, rail pressure, like five to 600 PSI, I believe. So um, yeah, Good. it's all clean, huh? You know, we were thinking about even drilling these out too, because this is the only bottleneck left in the system also. You know, interesting enough, the end of the fuel rail, the other side, already didn't have the, the little inlet there, a little restrictive inlet. It was already like that, you know? Very weird, very weird, but all right. No more bottleneck, guys. Got the fuel rail. We, we just blew it out with compressed air, by the way, so there's no metal shavings in there. It's going to do it a couple more times. Yeah, do it a couple more times. So there's nothing in there. We don't want any metal shavings. We took all of them off. Yeah. Right. Let's go inside the fuel rail now. I'm just gonna get out of the car. I'm just getting out of the car for a minute. Time to write this map. Actually, gotta go change something really quick. The th cool thing about custom tune is I didn't know until I got custom tune, guys. You can set your own burbles, whatever you want, over your own your tuner's custom tune. So I still got all these little cool settings. We'll go back to 1.5. Sport. I just need to change this because. He already has a T-map sensor marked in there, so we're just gonna go back to OEM. Okay, I got all the settings I want. Long right. Not even hooking it up to a battery charger, guys. Done this multiple times. If you got a good battery, you don't need to hook it up to a battery charger when you flash it, even if it's a long map. But all right. All right. I'll do this log. do the second gear pull I'm about to log this shit I'm about to hold on to my steering wheel and record as best I can guys here we go holy fuck god damn holy fuck Woo. not bad slight elevation slight elevation let's just start the log see if I can get some room to we'll start 60 I know it's gonna lurch for a second but then here we go yep What tune did you say you had on it? Oh, it's underneath here. The tune? Yeah. 
Oh, he has a piggyback, like a... Uh, like a day before, basically. Oh, oh you tune. Oh, damn. Is that good or bad? No, I mean, that's a piggyback tuner. <laughs> what does that mean? Uh, it's a good tuner. It tune, just plugs I mean. into your wire harness. Oh, yeah, piggyback. Yeah, I did it because if I go to the dealership, I can take it out. Yeah, but I'm thinking... Um, they said 650 horsepower? Yeah, well, it's like in the air between... It was five, yeah. Supposed to go up 110, so anywhere from like 615 to 650. Oh, well, I mean, 520, yeah. So, I don't know. I just say 650, but it's both. That's sweet, though, man. This is so beautiful. set like that because uh, oh, yeah. I don't want torque to break my trans because I'm still on stock clutch baskets. But Green line. 